Come on, slap somebody a high five. Hallelujah. We're excited about being with you today. Um, let's uh, do me a favor. Let's show Pastor Juan some, and Pastor uh, Ruthie some love right now. They are, they are out right now. Um, Pastor Juan, is, they are traveling from, uh, from Florida to Alabama, from Alabama back to Florida. They preached a couple of times last, last couple of days, and they were in Alabama this morning and then in Florida late on in the day and then going back to Alabama at, at the afternoon. And so we just praise God. They found out, some churches found out that he was going to be in the area in Alabama, and last night, they had a couple of busloads that packed up to come of men, of men who, who were coming out of incarceration that came to here. And uh, he called me this morning all excited, talking about how God had just showed out and many gave their lives to Christ. And so we just praise God for what God is doing through our pastors. Amen. He said he'll be back with you next week and to, and to extend his love. Uh, next, how many of y'all are ha signed up for a hangout? Good. If you're not signed up for a hangout after, after service, there will be hangout leaders outside. Please get involved because uh, we don't want you to just come here on Sunday morning and, uh, and walk away from here and not get plugged in. We want you plugged in so we can do life together. Uh, this coming Saturday is Men's One Day. Amen. Amen. If you have not signed up online, please make sure you go and sign up. It's not because uh, holding a spot for you or anything, but we want to know how much food we, we need to have for you. It's going to be on Saturday, and it's going to be a good time. We got uh, uh, Pastor Otto Kelly. He's an ex-professional football player running back, and uh, he's going to be coming in. He's fire baptized and just filled with a message from the Lord. He's going to be giving an incredible word on walking in the image of God, and so, so we want you to be here for that. And then um, lastly, uh, but not least, friends and family is coming up in a couple of weeks. Amen? Let's get out, let's get out and have a good time and enjoy each other's company, all right? Are y'all ready for the word today? Amen. Good, good. Um, today, uh, we are continuing in the series um, about root causes, root causes. When we look at, at, our, at our lives and we see and we notice patterns in our life, we have to understand that every pattern uh, in our life happens for a reason. If there's a negative pattern, or whether it's negative or positive, every pattern that we have has a root from somewhere. If there's a positive pattern in our life, it, it, it uh, reflects that there's a positive seed in our life that we have accepted in, as true, and then God blesses that seed, blesses that word, blesses what we have determined to be true about our existence. In the same way, if you see a negative, negative pattern in your life, a lot of times we always want to, in our Christ, Christianity, our, our holiness, we want to point outside of ourselves to try to determine why we're going through. And so everything that we go through is because of somebody else. I went through, my boss didn't like me, and I got fired, and all this type of stuff. And that might be true for one job, but if you done lost seven or eight jobs in a row, <laughs> tell your neighbor, you might be the problem. <laughs> and so we always want to point to everything. If, if I'm always broken, I never get on top, it may be, a, the root cause of it may be because we don't know how to deal with our finances. And so we have to determine and be mature enough in our faith not to get, not to get, um, to get uh, childish and not to get offended by, by the word that goes forth. But it's time for us to grow up and say, if there's something, God is a God of blessing. He's a God of favor. He said in Jeremiah 29, 11, I know the plans I have for you, plans of good, not of evil, to bring you to a hope and a future. So if God plans to do good in your life, but you're continuing to see bad, it's not because of him, it's because of us. And it's time for us, it's time for us to look at ourselves and find out, say, what's the root? What's the root? Now, now, pastor started off last week when he was talking about roots and fruits, 
And in, um, in John chapter 15, it talks about us abiding in God. Say abide. abide. He tells us to abide in him and he will abide in us. And that if we abide in him and him in us, then we will bear much fruit. How many of y'all want to be a fruitful Christian? All right. In that, he says, this is how my father is glorified that we bear much fruit or we produce or we, he produces, but we carry much fruit. Now, as Christians, we want to hope that we, we, we like to hope that we could bear much fruit, uh, but we have to understand that it is not for our glory, but for his. A lot of us have a wrong motive in wanting to bear fruit because we want to be seen. We want to be known as the person who ministers. We want to be known as the person that's doing okay. Girl, you're looking good in that suit. Girl, you, girl, that new car you got, man, you're doing that. You came out and you're on top. And we get, we get more satisfaction out of the praise from men than we do the praises from God. So in this, tell, tell your neighbor, say, it's all about his glory, not my own. The word glorified, this, in this that the, the Father is glorified, the word glorified is the Greek word, a Greek word, doxeo, which means formation of an opinion. Formation of an opinion or spoken praise. This speaks to us because we have to understand in how we live our lives. We cannot say, I, girl, I don't care what you think of me. I'm doing me, boo. You do you. <laughs> Many of us have gotten to this place where we have become militant and we don't care. I don't care what you think of me. I'm going to do what I do. This is me. If you don't like it. But the reality is there's something wrong with you if you don't want to be seen as the reflection of God. If you don't care how people view you, it's a problem. Because the Bible says, let your light so shine before men that they see your good works and glorify him which is in heaven. We picked up this worldly mentality that we don't, we don't need to care about what people think. Yeah, you do. Yeah, you do. Because how people look at you reflects how they look at God. Ah, this is so good. I don't care if you don't say nothing. This is so good right here. Because our lives are advertisements to, to other people. For, now, I'm not saying you, you walk away from your holiness or your righteousness or walk away from, from righteous behavior in order to fit in with folks. But I am saying that you ought to care that they see the character of God and not the character of the world. It's, it's amazing that we always talk about uniqueness. I'm, I'm just me. I'm just I'm who I am. I do what I do. You know, I do, I do me. You do you, I do me. But it's amazing that we pick up the same things as everybody else in the world. We say we want to be different. We're we, we sleeping around just like everybody else. We say we want to be different, but the church is lying just like everybody else. It's amazing to me that the divorce rate in the, in the church is, high, is just as high, if not higher, than it is in the world. Something wrong with that. There ought to be something. If the world looks at us and don't see no difference, something wrong. There ought to be something when you walk by where they see you and say, you know what, I don't know what that man got, but it's something different about him. It's something different about him. I see him everywhere he stepped. Everywhere, y'all remember, the Midas touch, everywhere he stepped, it turned into gold. I see God prospering every step. And you ought to walk, walk, want to walk in a way that when folks see you, they see God. Because here's the problem. If you don't care how people see you, then what happens is people walk away from you, walk away from you, and never get witnessed by you. Okay, all right, all right, I'm going to get to you. I'm going to wake you up in just a minute. Here's the major problem with us glorifying God. In, in Romans chapter 2, verse 24, it says that the name of God, his divinity, his character, his counsel, his authenticity, is literally blaspheming amongst the Gentiles because of us. The reality is the world looks at us and they see, see how jacked up we are and they start talking about God. Oh God. <laughs> they start talking about God and because of our unfruitfulness, 
It ain't nothing different about you than the world. You posting the same pictures on Facebook and on, on, on Instagram as everybody else. Every, the, the world is doing this. <laughs> and it's amazing that church folks are taking pictures like this. It's ama- oh, it's amazing. It's upsetting to me. It's upsetting to me that we're living the same way the world is. We, we, they, they, we, we profess a scripture, and the very next picture, we popping a bill. Oh, if you can't say amen, say ouch. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That needs to be a distinction. Huh? There needs to be something in us. That, we, that, that says that we are holy, we're walking in, oh God. Listen to this. Everybody, you know, we went through that. Uh, we're, we're no different than Mark 11. When, when Jesus comes and he begins to, he, he's getting ready to go to the, to the cross and he comes, off, he comes out, of, out of being asleep and gets ready to go to, to uh, Jerusalem and all of a sudden he sees this fig tree from a mile away and it looked green from a mile away and then all of a sudden I'm hungry let me go over here and get me something to eat and here we are they as close as they get now we think that I don't I don't want you to look at Jesus as Jesus here I want you to look at Jesus as the world going through the most difficult moment he's ever had to go through the decision where he's having to go to the cross and he sees he sees a Christian he sees a Christian and they look green. They go into church on Sunday morning. They got it all together. They riding in the 750 Li BMW with the pecan tan interior and, uh, you know, all that type of stuff. And they say, Lord, let me go over here and see what's going on with them. They got their new glasses on. They got everything and everything is looking good. But the closer they get to us, they realize ain't no fruit. Huh? It ain't no fruit. So what does Jesus do? Jesus does this. He said, may you never bear fruit again. In other words, I don't want to hear nothing else from no Christian. Because every time I get close to y'all, the stuff that you say you're about, you ain't about. Every time I read a post on Facebook, every time I see you, you cussing folks and you acting crazy. And God, I don't know why God blessing you, but he ain't blessing. He, God, you, your life ain't doing nothing to bless somebody else. You chasing money just like me. So all your post is about how you can, five, five ways for you to get rich. <laughs> oh, God. Okay, all right. So let me ask you a question. How, let, me, well, let me say this to you. How you live matters. It matters. Uh, y'all, y'all know we went through this, uh, this, this whole racial uprising a couple of, Years ago, even right now, wherever is that debate on, on everybody, everybody, black lives matter. And then everybody want to come up, well, white lives matter too. Well, police lives matter. Can I tell you something? Godly lives matter. Holiness matters. Righteousness matters. Oh, God. I should have got more applause than that one. Okay. Now, in our desire to produce fruit, here's what you have to understand. In our desire to produce fruit, godly fruit, it's amazing that we're trying to produce godly fruit and we ain't even connected to God. In our desire to produce godly fruit, we just want to pray, God, bless this, bless that, bless that. And we ask him to bless us, but we don't ask him to reform us. We ask him to give us the money, but we won't ask him to give us the holiness. We ask him, we ask him, we ask him to give us the opulence of life, but we won't ask him to give us obedience. Huh? 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 We, 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 we ask him, we ask him, bless, bless my marriage, but yet and still y'all don't never go to church until something go wrong. Huh? We, 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 ha, ah, God, God, we, 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 we ask him, God, keep my, Keep my children pure, but yet still we're living an unholy life before our children and wonder why they're picking up the things and the habits that we do. And then we want to throw it up under grace and say, God understands my heart. Yes, he does. He understands that you don't want it anyway. 
There had to come a moment in my life where I understood, listen to this, where I got to the place where I realized that God ain't blessing my mess. And that's not an indictment. That's not Pastor Todd up here telling you you're going to hell with, ha- with gasoline draws on. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying, though, if I want to be blessed, I got to connect to the blessing. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, so let's just, Scripture says, apart from Jesus, you can do nothing. Why are we trying to manufacture a holy life or, 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 or a blessed life and we're not connected to the blessing? Zechariah 4 and 6 says this, not by power nor by might, but by my you know, sometimes we always want to accuse God, of, I mean, uh, the devil of being against us. Pray for me, Pastor. The devil is on top of me, man. He's coming at me. He's hitting me. No, it ain't. That's God. God says, I will not bless your life. I will not let you walk in blessing with the dysfunction that you're walking in. Huh? I would, I would, rather, I would rather for your comfort to be, to be, for you to be discomfort. And for you to go through the pain that you go through, so it'll bring you back to me that to bless what you're doing and think that it's okay. Oh, God. All right. All right. Can't say amen. Say what? Oh, all right. So here it is. Fruitfulness is the product of not of our own personal strength and will. Fruitfulness is the product of the vine or the root that we're connected to. He says a good tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a bad tree bear bu- bad fruit. In other words, um, uh, excuse me, nor can a bad tree bear good fruit. In other words, your life will only produce what you have, have inside of you. My, 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 I am the blackest of the black men. When I was growing up, I said I was a black man. I wanted a black house. I wanted a, a black car. I wanted to live in a black neighborhood. I'm black to black to black black. <laughs> I wanted to go back. <laughs> then all of a sudden, I got married. I got married to a what? A black woman. If she had come out, if my child, my son had come out and he was white or Hispanic, we would have had a problem. Why? Because you only reproduce what you are. And many of us are acting like the world and wonder why we're producing worldly consequences. Ah, uh, it's not into God. Okay, this is so good right here. This is how I say it's so good. This is so good. It's so rich. Okay. Ah. Uh, it's not until what changes on the inside of you that you change what's on the outside of you. Okay. So this brings us to our message today. Bitter root. Bitter root, the, the fruit of our dysfunction, of our dysfunctional life can be anything. It can range from a whole bunch of stuff. It can go from addiction. It can go from anger, Anxiety, lust, sexual immorality, idolatry, lying, dishonesty, lack of integrity, unforgiveness, resentment, envy, hate, jealousy, whatever your, your issue is, fill in the blank, blank. It can be all that. That's, that. that's the fruit. But let me tell you the root of the fruit. The root of the fruit is bitterness towards God. Many of you might not even know it, but many of us, Every sin comes out of bitterness towards God. Let me share, share, show you how. And what I'm talking about, I'm not talking about bitterness and unforgiveness as it relates to you being mad with a person. What I'm talking about is, is how you view God. What I went through was so, so, so hellacious. What I went through was so bad. God, if you really love me, you wouldn't allow that to happen. If you really love me, you wouldn't allow this person to die. If you really love me, you would have saved me before I went into jail. You, if you really love me, you would have did this, 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 and this. And we blame God for every situation. And he told you already, he told us already, I put before you life and death, blessings and curses, choose life. And when we chose something other than life, then we, we blame God for why we go through what we go through. Okay, I can't see nothing right now. 
can't see. I, I, I know this is Alvaro right here and his wife, but that's only because I saw him when I had my glasses on. Here's the problem. I'm going to take this. Alvaro, come here, please. Now, these are the mechanisms by which I see life through. Can you verify to everybody that it is that is pretty jacked up? Okay. All right. Thank you. So now, this is what happens. Right now, I can't see nothing. I'm not going to move out of this place. You know why? Because I'm going to fall. But this is what happens in life. Uh, we allow sin to dirty us up and dirty up how we view life. And so this person hurt us. That person did this to us. And then we blame every bump and we blame every fall on a God who didn't dirty it up. It was the sin in our life. And we walk around with this jacked up perspective of who God is. Oh, God must be mad at me. Oh, God doesn't like me. Oh, God sent me through this and God did this. And it ain't God, it's you. Huh? You gave your vision. We gave our vision over to an enemy who dirtied it up and tried to convince you that God's way was not, it was not the right way. He tried to convince you that it was something better out there than being in the presence of the Lord. And so you tried something because you thought, we thought that God was holding something from us. Huh? And so we got bitter with God because God, you ain't giving me what I want. You ain't giving me this. You ain't giving me the house. You ain't giving me the car. You, you, my relationship messed up. This person hurt me. Shut up. Because if you have a wrong perspective, if you have a wrong perspective, you will look at life through jacked up means. And so you will view God as a tyrant. You will view God as a person that doesn't love you. You will view God as a person that all, a God that always wants to punish you. You will view God as a God that will never give you what you need. You will view God as, a, come on. And so it's not until we submit ourselves to the watering of the word and the cleansing by the way of the Holy Spirit, huh, that it clears up our perspective and we're able to see. Sometimes we fall, not because God wants us to fall. We fall because our perspective of who he is is wrong. Okay, listen to this. Here's the lie behind everything. God, can I tell y'all something? Let's, let's read that. So 2 Corinthians, I, I jumped over my scripture. 2 Corinthians 11 and 3 says this. But I fear lest somehow, um, somehow as the serpent deceived Eve by the craftiness, by his craftiness, so your minds have been corrupted by the simplicity of Christ. Paul says here, he said, I fear that the same way that the devil got Eve, he gonna get you. How did he get Eve? God gave Eve everything. And the one thing that she could not have, the one thing that she could not have, the devil convinced her that God was withholding something from her. And so she pursued something that God never meant for her to pursue and then wonder why, she got dis why we get disqualified from paradise. So what happens is, uh, married men, all of a sudden, you, you, you get up a little in age, you go through your midlife crisis, your wife is right there, she's still more beautiful than you. Huh? But she might not have the curves that she had when she was 25. She might not have the figure that she had when she's 25. And then some little pretty little hot thing walked by. Huh? And, you, and you've been with her 
for umpteen years. She done bore your children. She done stood by you and prayed when you were sick. And then all of a sudden, the one thing you ain't supposed to have, you say to yourself that the grass is greener on the other side. Huh? It's not. And let's throw y'all ladies up there too. Huh? All of a sudden, Samika call you and tell you how good Johnny treating her. And then all of a sudden, you go to your husband, John, why you can't, you can't act like Samika's man. <laughs> huh? We, we, get to this, we get to this place where we always want something else. That's why we lie. Why? Because we figure that we can't, what, we, what we're going to get when we lie is greater than what we would get if we tell the truth. Huh? That's, that's why we steal. Because we feel like that somehow God can't give us what we're going to take from somebody. Huh? That's why we do it. That's why we, why we pursue porn. Because we think that somehow the, the wife or the husband that God gives us can't satisfy us like this. Everything is about thinking that God won't give you and you want something different. It's a root of bitterness. Come on. Here's the lie. The number one goal of the enemy is to distort your view of God. Somehow he, God, you look at... You, Alvaro is rocking with his ministry right now, doing, uh, doing men's, men's uh, ministry all over, all over the state, anywhere they bring him. He, he conference over here, uh, work, uh, 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 retreat over here. Hundreds and thousands of men are coming to Christ. And here it is, Pastor Todd, I'm over here. I get to preach every once in a while at, at, uh, at Get Ralph, and yeah, it's okay. I really want what Alvaro want, I got. And so we get to this place where we, what we don't have becomes better than what we do have. And the truth of the matter is that's where sin begins because you miss the fact that if you would just pay attention to what you do have. I, I, I love these videos where they, where they cut, you know, the man go and cut the grass and cut down all the weeds and all that, and he do it for free. I love them videos. I absolutely, absolutely love them. And he cut this one grass one day, and the grass still looked jacked up because the grass was dead. And then all of a sudden, the guy went in his truck. He got this big barrel, brought it out, started pumping it, and he started spray painting the grass. When he got through spray painting that grass, that grass looked like it had just come out of Home Depot or something like it. Had, I mean, it looked good. I was like, man. And he said, God said, you know what? It's still dead. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and here's the problem. You're so busy looking at what somebody else has and don't realize it's still dead. <laughs> <laughs> you want a life that's dead. You want... You want you wanting what somebody else has rather than going out and fertilizing and cutting your own grass. Ooh, tell your neighbor, say it's still dead. And even if it's alive, can can I tell you something? You can preach this. I know you. Uh, just, even if it is alive, a lot of us want stuff that we ain't willing to pay the, pay the price for. See, you don't know what somebody else went through to get that green grass. <laughs> Hallelujah. You want the green grass, but you don't want to pay the price. You don't know how long they've been on their knees. You don't know how long they've been submitting to God. You don't know the hours they put in on this thing. And many of us are wanting stuff that we're not willing to pay the price for. Uh, this brings us to, that, did I, I didn't give my first point. Bitter, did I give it? Bitter roots defile. I meant bitter roots uh, deceive you. God, the devil will always try to deceive you to think that something is better somewhere else. Hmm? This brings us to our second point. I hope you got all that in what I just said. Whenever you begin looking outside of God to find significance and fulfillment, 
you will be deceived into devaluing where you are. This brings us to point number two. Bitter roots defile and devalue. Let's look at Hebrews chapter 12. This is so good. Hebrews chapter 12. Oh, God, I got to go. Uh, tw chapter 12, uh, verse 14 through 16. Pursue peace with all people and holiness without which no one will be able to see the Lord. Looking carefully, lest, lest anyone fall short of grace, lest any root of bitterness spring, springing up cause trouble, and by this many become defiled. Lest there be any fornicator or profane person like Esau, who for uh, one more morsel sold his birthright. Verse seven, 16 talks about Esau. Talks about Esau and his choice in Genesis chapter 25 to give up his inheritance for a temporary comfort. How many of us are giving up our inheritance, the inheritance we have with living with God for a temporary comfort? Here's what we have. It is in the moment that we begin to fall short of the grace, God's grace, because we begin to minimize what we have and maximize in, in our minds the, what somebody else has. And so what do we do? We exchange. We exchange holiness for worldly living. We exchange God's, God's center, uh, centeredness for being all about ourselves. We exchange our witness for tolerance. We exchange sexual purity for, for full-blown immorality. We exchange modesty for lustful seduction. Let me tell y'all something. Ladies, I, I love you. I, I, love, I love how beautiful you are. But stop, stop, stop trying to get a man with your curves. Huh? Really, seriously. It's amazing that the, the world is no different. The church these days, oh, it's amazing to me. And then when you don't have it anymore, because that stuff drops. Huh? It drops. It gets bigger. Huh? Not just, and, and men, not just on the women, it gets bigger on you. Huh? Huh? It drops. And then if you had to do that to catch them, you're going to have to, when somebody else come along with a little more curve. Huh? Stop trying to seduce a man. We exchange obedience. Huh. Enduring obedience, we exchange it for be being obedient only when it feels good. Like Esau, we exchange the inheritance of an eternal birthright for, for, for a morsel of a moment. Tell your neighbor, say, stop exchanging. He says, when you do this, you won't be able to see God. The word see is not, is not about physical sight, but it is about intimate expression, intimate experience. We wonder why we can't hear God. We wonder why we don't understand the Bible. We under, because why? Because we're submitting ourselves. We're submitting ourselves to a life that has exchanged the glory of God for the glory of the world. Tell your neighbor, say, pursue peace. pursue peace. He said, pursue peace with all people. Now, this, 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 so, this is so important because God didn't tell you to pursue peace with just the people you like. He didn't say pursue peace just with the people who do you right. He said, pursue peace with all people. You know why? Because I'm not saying that you have to be in agreement with everybody. I'm not saying you got to like what people are doing. But if you live a life that's not willing to restore somebody and not willing to be able to share, if you cut them off, yeah, everybody want to cut people off. What if Jesus had cut you off? Huh? Because you messed it up with him. You cheated on him. You did him wrong. You lied on him. He didn't cut you off, but every time, some oh, wait, you hurt me. The devil, come on, shut up. <laughs> shut up. Get over it. Grow up. Come on now. Why do, why? I'm not saying that you have to hang out with them. But if you're not at the place of maturity where you're willing to, 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 to receive them so that God can use you 
for the ministry of reconciliation that you're not as holy as you think you are. Oh, God. It's amazing how, it's, it's amazing how this, the church, in the name of boldness, have exchanged boldness for rudeness. Huh? So, 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 so it ain't that we really being bold. Is that this, this is my opportunity to be truthful with you. I'm going to tell you what the truth is. I'm, I'm just being real. No, you're being real rude. Huh? Huh? You can say it in a way that they can receive it. Huh? It's, it's a difference in saying, girl, you in sin. You know, I thank God got something better for you. Come on, let's, let's sit down and talk about this. Let me show you something in Scripture. Same message. Sometimes it ain't what you say, it's how you present it. All right. All right. So pursue, pursue peace with people, pursue holiness. In the same way that you receive God, you got to receive a holy life. Now, here's where we mess it up. Because everybody said, well, it's not by works lest any man should boast. You my judge? Why are you, why are you judging what I do? Why don't you worry about you, boo? Here's the problem with that. Here's, here's, here's the big problem with that. Because the Bible says without holiness, no one can see God. Now, does that mean that you are saved by what you do? No. But it does mean that what you do reflects your salvation. There are certain things I just don't do because I'm saved. And I'm not saying that we're all, that everybody is always mature. But what I am saying is, if you're not growing in maturity, walking in righteousness, and walking out the faith and growing from day to day, then you may not be saved. This is my ring. It represents the finest, most <laughs> wonderful woman in the world. Every time I see her, I just want to just... Ah. <laughs> now, I'm married to her. This ring shows my covenant. It doesn't mean if I take it off that I'm not married to her. But because I'm married to her and I'm in covenant, I want to put on my ring. Why? To show that I'm in covenant. So even though works will not save you, works are what we do to show that we're married to Christ. Because I'm married to Christ, there ought to be something in my life that I do that, is, that shows that I'm married. I'm walking holy not because it gets me somewhere. I'm walking holy because I want to represent you. Can I challenge you on something? Go home. Some of your friends is walking crazy. Tell them, I can't walk with you no more. There's some stuff... If you want, you want to talk about the word, you want to watch the football game, but I ain't drinking. Some of y'all in relationships. Girl, boy, I, never, I know I gave it up to you the other day, but I ain't giving it up to you no more. Huh? No ringing, no. Huh? Huh? Oh, you, you, there, there ought to be a line that you draw and say, this is the bloodline. I ain't crossing that. Uh, come on. Here's point number three. I got to get it again fast. Bitter, bitter roots distort. Bitter roots distort. Put up Ruth chapter 1, verse 19. It says this. Now the two of them went, went until they came to Bethlehem. And it happened when they had come to Bethlehem that all the city was excited because of them. This is Ruth and Naomi. Naomi was an older woman who was mentoring Ruth. Ruth had decided, I'm not leaving you. I'm going to stay with you. I, I don't know. There's something about you. I'm going to stay with you. Come on, y'all better find some people you can stay with. There's walking. Come on. But even though Ruth wanted to walk with her, Naomi had a jacked up understanding of who God was. Why do I say that? Because it says, when the women said this to Naomi, woman of God, they called her woman of God. She said, but, but she said to them, do not call me Naomi. 
Call me Mara, which means bitter. God, I got this against you. I lost everything. I lost my husband. I lost my children. And there's nothing about my life that can be better because of what I lost. The bitterness towards God is always the thought that somehow you lost something that the, G- the blood of Jesus didn't pay for and can't restore. And we have to get, get out of this mentality about God. I lost my mama. I lost this person or this person died in my life so my life will never be the same. You just made an indictment about God. God, why did you take this person? Why did you take this? Why did you do this? I lost my money. I lost this and that. No. God is a restorer. And sometimes the things that, that most of, the things that we lose are not because of God. The things that we lose in life is because we live in a fallen world. You took my mama. Well, every, all of us, the Bible says it's appointed to all of us one time to die. And so we make these judgments. God, I, I'm not going to serve you no more because I put my trust in you and you didn't, you took my mama. He didn't take your mama. He received your mom. And sometimes we think that somehow our Christianity is about our comfort. Our Christianity is about your comfort. It's, a, it's about his purpose. In this life, he said, I tell you these things so that you can be of good cheer. In this life, you're going to have some tribulations, but be of good cheer for I've overcome the world. He never told you everything was going to be great. It's an immature Christian that don't want to go through nothing. I remember I blamed God. I was molested as a child by four people at one time. From the age of 8 to 12, I was passed around as a sex toy, having sex every day with grown folks. Hurt. I pushed past that, got early in, later in life, I got married. Went into ministry, thought things were good, and all of a sudden, all of a sudden, my one Sunday, I wake up to go to the church, and my wife looks at me, my ex-wife looks at me and says, I'm not called to this. I can't be married to a pastor. Took one baby out of, that was in her, in her arms and one baby that was in her stomach and walked out on me. I was sitting on the bed ready to blow my brains out. Went through homelessness, eating out of a garbage can. And I started blaming God. Fast forward, God gives me the wife that I have now. We've been married for 21 years, and God, everything is. But hold on. But then, after pastoring for 17 years, I come to the church, and there's not one person at the church but me and my wife. And I'm preaching the empty seats. COVID hit. And I end up having to close my church. And I said, God, why did you, why did you give me this dream and this vision to take it from me? And what I didn't realize is that all things work together. How many of you, I'm not asking this for applause from me, but how many of you, this message is blessing you right now? (laughs) Notice this. Had I, had I given up because of what I lost, you wouldn't be getting this word. And sometimes God allows us to go through things that we can't understand and we can't see because he has a very greater purpose. When you go on in chapter 4 of Ruth, the Bible says that Naomi, Naomi Ruth ends up marrying Boaz. Boaz is the richest man in the town. He, everybody want him. But he picked the one that was by herself. God is about to pick you to do something that nobody else thought you could do. And they end up conceiving a child. And the woman that's called herself bitter. 
Ruth hands the baby to her, and the Bible says, as she received the baby, so good, that milk, this woman is probably 80 to 100 years old. It said milk filled her breasts. And she took that baby to, her, to herself and nurtured what she never thought she could nurture. Stand up on your feet. Some of you have gotten bitter with God because you think time has missed you. And you lost everything. And God says, I'm telling you, I'm, I'm filling your breast again. If you, can, if you can understand that everything you want, went through, I got something for you. He's going to fill you back up. Prayer, prayer release, come on. If you've blamed God for, for something that's happened in your life, and you haven't, and you haven't, you haven't released that to him, and you've been bitter, and you've been, been had a negative thought process about God, well, you can't do this, and you're different, and you're not who you say you are. I want you to come to the altar, and I want you to let somebody pray for you. Because we need to break that mentality so that you can see the presence of God happening in your life. Father, I ask you to bless them right now. And that every root of bitterness is plucked up. And all that's left is your love. In Jesus' name. Amen. Isn't the Lord good for that message this morning?